Hey everyone, it's Nathan from VSN Apps, and I'm here to go over the 10 things that Hanzo mains are doing wrong. Now I'm going to be talking kind of fast in this video because there's a lot to go over, but 10 will be aiming. Now if you have aiming issues with Hanzo, you need to practice. Bottom line, practice makes perfect, as they always say, and a good way to do that is by playing against AI. Now you're gonna want different characters, and I suggest no tanks if you're practicing alone, mainly because it takes a lot to kill tanks and they rush you in practice. So aim Hanzo scope directly between the top and middle dots for what you want to hit. And if you want to get better with headshots with Hanzo, practice. Really, seriously. It doesn't just work out, and you can't just set your sights at a certain height because everyone has a slightly different hitbox. Now the best way to get headshots is to aim for the neck. If you do this, I assure you that you will get better. Because if your aim is still slightly off, you have less of a chance of completely missing your target by shooting over them, and body shots are still good shots. See, the and neck shots still count as headshots, so that's pretty amazing right there. And the last thing about aiming, make sure you completely draw your arrow back, because I see a lot of people complaining about headshots that didn't kill people, and that's why you gotta completely draw back. Now let's talk about panicking for a moment. So you got like a tracer on you, or somebody's ambushing you from behind. I see a lot of Hanzo's just spin around and spray and pray. And that's really not the case at all. Just take your time. It's almost a full clip of tracer shooting you with a point blank or in the head to kill you. And chances are she will reload before she even kills you off. So focus on aiming, and I know that moving targets are hard to hit sometimes. But even if you don't get that one hit headshot, shooting her anywhere puts her at less than half health, causing a revert or a retreat, so you have much more time than you think. On the other note, most flanks happen with one or two characters, and if you spin around and randomly shoot, your collective potential flies out the window. Maybe you'll get a lucky shot, and you wouldn't even know. But wouldn't you rather be in control of the situation? This brings me to number eight, the long game. So if you're a Hanzo main, you normally pick him every single match, no matter what, right? Which means Hanzo turns from a sniper defender character into a DPS attack character, right? Then explain why do you sit back off the objective trying to pick people off. Get in the damn game. Hanzo isn't defenseless. There's been plenty of times where I, as Hanzo, will capture an objective by myself in a 1v2, 1v3, or even a 1v4. A close Hanzo is terrifying if you can play him right. So practice getting into the fray so you don't miss key captures with your team because you stayed back and watched your team fall apart while you were missing long picks. This is a numbers game. If you pick one or two from far back, that allows your team to rush in and capture the point. Great, but you're still pushing the odds in the favor of the opposing team by being scared to rush in when it's absolutely necessary to have your whole team together. 6 v 4 is a lot better than 5 v 4 especially when you're trying to tear down a tough defense. So this is a pretty big problem I see for most Hanzo's playing. They never use sonar arrows. Do you understand how amazing that ability is? You can see either how the enemy is set up defensively, or you could sonar an alternate route to make sure the enemy isn't trying to flank or sneak up on you. In some cases, like, I don't know, me Bonnie, you can actually map out where the enemy is going by shooting a crucial spot on the map. You can even make the sonar a moving sonar by shooting the enemy. Like, it is an amazing ability. People need to start using it. But, you know, with players like that, it's no wonder that Hanzo's get such a bad rep when no one uses its most powerful team ability to help the team out. A good thing to start doing is to sonar the beginning spawn when you're on defense. It takes 20 seconds to get it back, and if you rush the point, you have more than enough time to shoot it and get it back before the match starts. Then you can see what you're up against, and you can plan accordingly to strengthen your defense against the attackers that are coming after you. So please, please start using this ability. It is amazing and it helps your team out immensely. Why do you think Widow has it as her ult? So on one hand, I see Hanzo's using this a lot, and I mean a lot. It's fairly deadly when you can single shot a tank. 
you know you have something way too OP. But most Hanzos just panic shoot them, leaving them fairly defenseless in most situations. If you really focus on an enemy's situation, you'll know when Genji has no reflect, Mercy has no res, Roadhog has no hook, or who is close to ult through death camps. Same goes for Hanzo. People watch Hanzos on the enemy team, and if they panic scatter, they get rushed, and this almost always works to get rid of them. Now this isn't something that's generally discussed because Hanzo is capable of getting killed by any character one on one. If you are rushed, the best tool for you is scatter, but 8 seconds is a long time to have to wait before getting it back. Use it wisely. Smaller targets like Tracer, Mercy, Sombra, Baby Diva, but especially Symmetra have the potential to wreck your day, are harder to hit, and can usually tell like most of the time who the problems are for your team. So don't just scatter shot a 76 because he's shooting at you. That leaves you more vulnerable for him to get you if you didn't kill him, and open for the rest of his team to rush you and take you out even if you did. Also, you do know that the scattered arrow doesn't just hit the ground, right? You can use them around corners to see if the enemy is there when you're waiting on your sonar, or to finish off an enemy going for a health pack. Play smart. Don't rely on scatters to get kills. Use them to your advantage. Now, whenever I talk about movement for a Hanzo, I always think of them as turning into the Widowmaker when they aim. They barely move. If you ever study videos, if you watch the way that the masters use Hanzo, they're unpredictable. Most gamers have been conditioned to aim slightly off in the direction that the enemy is moving, so easy predictions are easy picks when you move one way constantly. Jump, crouch, strafe, and practice how to aim while doing all of this. If you can kill an enemy in one shot, that means you're just as vulnerable. I'm not saying to turn your sensitivity all the way up and take your time getting used to that. It isn't necessarily going to help you out. I play with mine on default and I can still spin around and get a headshot on Reaper ulting before I die, so it's not necessary to tweak your sensitivity. Alright, so let's talk about ulting real quick. Hanzo's ult is incredibly powerful and can be comboed with a few ults to devastating effect, but that isn't always the way you want to use it. Hanzo's ult is definitely one of the most support ults for a hero who isn't support, and you can break down a defensive stance with it, you can cover your attack with it, but most importantly, you can clear a point with it. Now let's say the team is having trouble on a payload map, and you just can't get the two meters to the next point. Hanzo's ult is perfect for that. It makes people get out of the way, and the only counter for it is the opposing team already having turret set up. Don't you hold your ult for a combo with Zarya if you can get that couple of meters without it. Especially if you have two or three other people that can combo with her and make it work out just as well. Most importantly though, please, please stop ulting from far away. Have you ever seen a play of the game with Hanzo ult from spawn? That's because you're giving the enemy team way more than enough time to adjust to remedy to your ult. The closer the better. Just don't ult in front of D.Va because she can eat it before it turns into dragons. So just remember that point. Now a moment of silence for the next one. Alright, we're almost there, there's two more to go. Now let's talk about cohesiveness. Now I know Hanzo can be great on his own. Trust me, I've had lots of practice. This being said, don't you think having the support of the rest of his team would make him even better? There are times when I see this kind of Hanzo, drastically less than the long game Hanzo, but just as defective. Hanzo is not a standalone character. He is meant to have a tank protecting him, a healer nearby, and someone closer who can finish off the shots that he doesn't pick off immediately. So why do some Hanzos run off on their own? Especially when the match starts. You can sonar, that's fine. But shouldn't you sonar near the choke where your team is setting up after the match starts so the rest of your team can see when they're coming? And more importantly, where? Don't overextend. You're leaving your team in a 5v6 situation right off the start, and that's terrible. Now that being said, on maps where you can climb to higher levels easier, like Hollywood, Kingsborough, Route 76, yeah, those kind of maps. You have my thanks. It's easy to get split up from your team because you can get to places where your the rest of your team has to take an actual route. So this is good for flanking. 
but flanking with Hanzo is an all or nothing situation. You can't usually get away once you begin because you're too vulnerable running up a wall. And your bow isn't an effective SMG, so you won't break up any group if you miss. This results in the continuous deaths of Hanzo over and over because the strategy isn't working. But you're continuing to do so because it's a sound strategy. Don't keep doing the same thing if it doesn't work. Communicate and get another plan worked out because six minutes may seem long, but it's over before you know it. And if you can't capture a point because you're a one-trick pony with Hanzo and it didn't work out this time, you can't group up with your team and get a sound strategy going as an offensive Hanzo or being up close, you're never going to gain rank. You're going to stay where you're at. Or possibly even lose rank. So if you have a dive Attack comp team and you go Hanzo, you might need to be prepared to go all out. You've got to stick with your team, keep the enemy off of you from all angles because dive comp gets constantly surrounded. This is not Hanzo's strong suit. And if you see yourself in this situation, you might want to rethink your pick. Yes, Hanzo doesn't always work. If you have a Widowmaker, don't pick Hanzo. If you have a dive comp, maybe pick a better character to accommodate. If you have no healer but a decent team, do yourself a favor and be a healer. It's one match, and if you can't be the bigger person, you aren't going to get out of the that bronze status or whatever situation you're stuck in. He isn't going to be the best idea for every match, ever. Get over yourself from one Hanzo main to another. If you put in half the time in another character as you do in Hanzo, you could possibly do better in that person than playing Hanzo at all, in all honesty. Do you see a lot of Ana players? That's because she's not easy to play. Although she can heal the most out of any healer, she has to be mastered in order to be effective. So the character that is the best at something doesn't necessarily mean they would be the wisest pick. If you play Hanzo and you aren't getting gold damage or you're not getting very many picks, don't be stubborn. Accommodate for the situation and switch to a different character to remedy your team's problems. This is the biggest fault of a Hanzo player and where the hatred from the character roots from.